Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to me, your host, Christian Watson. Well, my friends, it is great to be with you guys here today. Again, if you support my content or you've been watching or you're new here, I just want to say thank you. You are doing a great deal of good by doing this, not just for me and my own brand, which is great, but you're doing a great deal of good for the intellectual advancement of our political space, of our political discourse, of that which molds and shapes the conditions in which policy is uh, birthed and, and where policy materializes. So I just thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and speaking of things that are birthed and materialized and conditions, there is a condition in the American mind right now if you want to even call it that, this grand thing called the American mind, uh, or within certain American consciousnesses, uh, that really perplexes me. <laughs> and this condition is nothing other than, again, the condition of trying to estimate the entire world through A, a lens of lived experience, and B, a sort of paradigm of social justice in, uh, surrounding that uh, lens of lived, lived experience. I think Chris Harrison is the latest victim of this trend. So Chris Harrison, for those of you who do not know, is the host of a show called The Bachelor. Now, look, I'm 20 years old, but I, I was raised by strong women. I was raised by strong black women. So I have had my due exposure to everything from the Real Housewives of whatever city uh, into The Bachelor. And I am familiar with the show. I don't watch it. I think that it is very odd to commodify love and to uh, publicize the pursuit of love uh, in this sort of superficial, artificial box that some production company thinks is the best way to go about handling these things. But hey, I think that it is beautiful that People get a lens into the process of courting. They get a lens into things that um, concern romance because it gives them somewhat of a hope that they too will find their Prince Charming or their Princess Diana. Although I think that there is indeed a superficial quality about these TV shows that are concerning. But anyway, Chris Harrison has been the longtime host of The Bachelor. And as this Guardian.com um, uh, article says... He steps aside amid racism, racism row. So let me just be very clear. The Guardian is a left-wing website. The Guardian is very biased. I tend not to take them seriously. They have a guy called Owen Jones writing for them. And in my opinion, Owen Jones is one of the most intellectually dishonest, um, puerile, <laughs> sophomoric political thinkers in the Western world, if you could even call him that. He quite literally ran off of an inter interview set because he didn't like how the host was phrasing an issue. But anyway, that's, that's the point. The Guardian is trying to phrase this, and the rest of American society is really trying to phrase what happened with Chris Harrison as racism or as a product of racism. So what here's what happened. Basically, Chris Harrison defended one of his contestants on the show, Rachel Kirkconnell, who liked a social media post, as this article says, liked social media posts featuring Confederate flags, while photos have also emerged purportedly showing her at an Old South-themed college party several years ago, according to reports. Kirkconnell has been described as a frontrunner to win the affections of series star Matt James, the first ever Black Bachelor. Harrison discussed the Kirkconnell controversy on Tuesday, here's the problem came in, in an interview with Rachel Lindsay, the franchise's first black star. Lindsay asked Harrison what he thought about what why, why neither the Bachelor franchise nor Kirkconnell has addressed the controversy. Well, I can tell you, because Kirkconnell, it's not, it shouldn't be a controversy. And perhaps Kirkconnell doesn't feel the need to justify herself for something that she didn't really have any racist intent or malice with. We'll get to that later. Moving on. <clears throat> Harrison asked viewers to give Kirkconnell a little grace. These were the controversial words, my friends. This is why Harrison's stepping aside for now. Harrison asked viewers to give Kirkconnell a little grace a little understanding, a little compassion, rather than taking a leap and making a decision about her based on reported social media posts. So what Harrison said about Kirkconnell liking the Confederate flag post and being in a Old South-themed antebellum party, he said, look, don't rush to judgment, just 
take her for who she is and try to see who she is as a person. These two snapshots in time, which are not even a fraction, they are an infinitesimal estimate, estimation of her life, an infinitesimal estimation of her genius, an infinitesimal esti estimation of the animating quality of her being. Don't let these infinitesimal estimations of these things cause you to make a extrapolation about the whole of her being. That's what he's saying. Don't judge a book by its cover, as the old adage would say. And for that, what happened? For that, Harrison got mobbed. Here's what also Harrison had to say about Lindsay, about Kirkconnell. He said, she said, 100% right in 2021 about her being at the party, being a bad look. That was not the case in 2018. I'm not defending Rachel. I just know that, I don't know, 50 million people did that in 2018. He's referring to being in Confederate themed parties. That was a type of party that a lot of people went to. Where is this lens we're holding up? And was this lens available? And were we all looking through it in 2018? So he's basically saying, okay, we kind of, and this is a, a disposition that many academics in general have. They like to say, okay, Thomas Jefferson was evil because he owned slaves. We're judging that by a subjective standard of morality from the 21st century. Slavery is obviously evil, but you cannot color the entirety of Jefferson's being simply because he owned slave because guess what he also had an aversion to slavery funnily enough he was a complex person as what woman says we contain multitudes of people we contain multitudes i contain multitudes we are not just defined by one thing or one or one quality or one condition or one point in time we contain multitudes so harrison is actually speaking some ontological truth here Harrison's actually saying, no, we got to stop. We have to look at these things from a broader lens. And guess what? There was fallout for it. So Harrison apologized. Harrison said, I have spent the last few days listening to the pain my words have caused, and I am deeply remorseful. My ignorance did damage to my friends, colleagues, and strangers alike. I have no one to blame but myself for what I said and the way I spoke. Here's the catch. Harrison goes on to say, by excusing historical racism, I defended it. I invoked the term woke police, which is unacceptable. I am ashamed over how uninformed I was. I was so wrong. This reads like an apology that a first grade teacher made their student wrote after they went to the playground and had a little bit of a scuffle. That isn't really genuine. It's just meant to get people off their back. Harrison knew exactly what he was saying. He knew exactly what he believed. But he's simply trying to save his his career right now in Hollywood. So there are a few philosophical issues at the core of all this, my friends. There's a problem of a historical association, right? So we have to ask ourselves, why in the world did she do this? Because the Confederate flag has been associated with brutishness, white supremacy, um, anger towards African-American subjugation. But... The question of historical association compels us to ask, is simply being proximal to those things endorsements of their historical negatives? So if I am proximal to a Nazi flag, does that mean I endorse the tenets of Nazism? Or does that mean I endorse tenets of Hitler? If I am proximal to a USSR flag, does that mean I supported Stalin and the purges? Is simply being in the presence of evil enough to make you evil yourself? If you say yes, then we have a serious problem here. If you say yes, let me ask you this. How does the simple presence of something, just the presence, not me endorsing it, not me doing it, the presence, does that necessarily mean I endorse it? Does the presence of a book mean I've read the book? This is a book I've been trying to read for a while, but, 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 but lands about uh, massacres across Europe. I haven't read this book yet. There are plenty of books in the, my presence that I have not read. There is a book I have here about Edward, I, Edgar Allan Poe, all of his stuff, every single thing, Eleanor, everything. I've read some of the stuff, not all of it though. I have an, a, a book on H.P. Lovecraft, all his stuff. Just because I'm in the presence of books does not mean I understand or I have the knowledge of books. So you cannot logically judge her for simply being in the presence of something 
unless you can prove that she was adulating the historical negative that she was in the presence of. And guess what? Detractors of Rachel Kirkconnell have not been able to do that. So the first question is kind of answered. No, it makes no logical sense for us to consider proximity, proximity to mean endorsement. Proximity does not mean endorsement. Therefore, Rachel's proximity to the Confederate flag is probably meaningless. So Rachel interacted with this flag at two times. Number one, she was at a, a Georgia State University frat party with Kappa Alphas. Um, and the Sun did an article about this. What in the world is a, what in the world is, oh, God, my screen's messed up. What in the world is a, what in the world is a antebellum party? Now, look, I live in the South, guys. I live in the South. There are a lot of antebellum plantation themed parties. And to outsiders, it may seem distasteful. To me, I'm not into that kind of stuff personally. To me, it's kind of eh. I'm not, I don't like that kind of stuff. But it is a cultural element of the South. And we'll get to that in a moment. And it says here, Kirkconnell attended the antebellum themed party, which was thrown by the, the college fraternity Kappa Alpha while at Georgia College and State University in 2018. Now, the Kappas have held some problems with racism and everything. But again, simply being in the presence of the Kappas, simply being in the presence of a, of, a, of a Confederate flag or at a plantation party does not mean you're racist. It probably means that you are cultured in a specific sense. Rachel Kirkconnell has a certain sense of Southern culture about her. Is that racist? We will talk about that in a moment. But this also gives us the question of intention. The question of intention is, why did she do this? Why did she share a photo of her friend who is standing behind a Confederate flag or standing uh, before a Confederate flag? Why did she attend this antebellum party? And can we dis discern that these intentions were because of racism? Well, again, she was in a sorority herself. And guess what? In the South, a lot of fraternities and sororities, it's not just a specification, a lot of fraternities and sororities tend to engage in uh, celebratory or perhaps um, re reminiscing parties that involve the antebellum South. They tend to reminisce through parties. That's their mechanism. They don't necessarily mean anything about it. I mean, the girls, you see, she dressed up as a Southern Belle, cowboys, they don't mean anything by it. But again, just as the Confederate flag sometimes is also um, seen purely as racist, there are folks who will will the Confederate flag as simply a symbol of their cultural heritage. However foolish that might be, this is why there are articles after articles in The Atlantic written by Tyler Bishop talking about the idea of Southern pride, in uh, Chicago Tribune talking about the idea of Southern pride. Now, both of these articles, to be fair, by Bishop and in the Tribune, and the Atlantic and the Tribune, both of them condemn the use of the Confederate flag. Both of them do as a measure of expressing Southern pride. But both of them acknowledge that there are people who are not racist, who are using the flag as a symbol of pride, even if they can see that the flag itself is racist. So you can believe that the flag itself is racist and believe that people who are wielding the flag do not in every opportunity have to be racist. But guess what? In the Kirkconnell incident, she wasn't even wielding the flag. She was at a party where the flag was displayed. So there is an impersonal element to Kirk Connell's relationship with the damn flag. This is why I can't stand woke culture. Because it does not take into account the nuance that is, that is needed to make truth claims. It looks at aesthetics. It makes extrapolations, damning extrapolations, to take down people who seem unorthodox and ideologically divergent, irreverent, iconoclastic, even. But Kirkconnell wasn't even being iconoclastic. She had a she went to a party in 2018, a few years before her time on The Bachelor, and then, oh Lord, and then her friend happened to be in front of a Confederate flag, and she shared the post, which is you would have to prove that Kirkconnell shared the post because of the flag. You would have to prove that. Her mother says. Now, of course, this is her mother. She's biased. She says that in her daughter's defense, that, you know, someone fabricated this entire thing and that she, that, that Kirkconnell and her family are all against the Confederate flag. They're all against racism. 
But it makes no sense, as her mother said, to loop her in when being a confederate simply because she shared a picture with her friend who happened to be near the confederate flag. So we've, we've answered the problem of historical association. We've concluded that just because you're in the proximity of evil does not mean you are yourself evil. We've answered the problem of intention. It does not appear from the evidence seen here, from simple deduction and also from her mom's language, that they are in any way racist or in support of the Confederate flag. And it does not appear that she went to that party for any other reason than to have fun with her friends and dressing up as a Southern Belle. So we've answered the question of, of association and the question of intention. Now we have to look at the question of cultural context. In the South, as I mentioned before, this stuff happens. I don't even like it. The Confederacy, to me, is one of the most great, the greatest evils of, of American history. But I understand that a lot of people in the South had grandmothers and grandfathers and grand, grandchildren or whatever, they had ancestors, excuse me, who fought in the Civil War. And they used the flag, whether it's the battle flag or the other flag, to adulate that. Many of them have no conception or no desire to be racist. They have a desire to be traditionalist. Now, I think that traditions can be okay if they preserve liberty, but a tradition that bogs you down and holds you down to a, a, a anvil, a tainted anvil, such as the Confederacy, in my opinion, is not a tr good tradition at all. I think any good tradition is going to inform your sense of prudential belief. It's going to inform your sense of individualism. It's going to inform your sense of liberty. It's not going to have you reinforce an ancient culture that failed because it decided it was going to try to take the, the cause of liberty under its, under its own hands while not affording liberty to people, its subjects, who were manning the economy. That was the African-American slaves. So I think there's a lot of problems with the Confederacy, but that does not mean that Kirk Connell was racist. And it certainly does not mean that Harrison asking for historical context needs to be scrapped or that he himself was engaging in offensive behavior. So let me leave you with this, my friends. We have to be prudent. We have to be pensive. Stay pensive. We have to be pensive in these things. We can't just say crap. We can't just believe stuff. Because if we believe stuff, we are locking ourselves into a state of stasis, of intellectual stasis, where everything becomes outrage. Everything becomes less about truth values and truth claims and more about forwarding particular agendas that may not correspond to the principles of reality. Everything becomes about is skewing the light of the truth that the Socratic dialogue sought to bring out in us. It becomes about is skewing the natural law that the medieval theorists th th sought to articulate in the legalist spirit. It becomes about is skewing the things which allow us to engage in this human experience vivaciously and honestly. You need to engage vivaciously and you need to engage honestly. I don't care what your position is. I don't care what your beliefs are. You need to engage in the fullest light of the truth as you possibly can. And you can start by rejecting this nonsense and seeing Chris Harrison as nothing more than a prudent person who wanted to cause and call for historical context to a very polarized situation. Think on it. As always, my friends, if you like this message, donate to me, man. We're, we're on fire. We're on fire, and we're going to take the war to these people, the pensive war, the intellectual war, not the physical war, the intellectual war, and we're going to win, I promise you. As always, my friends, I love you, and you better stay pensive. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you enjoy this message, please be sure to support my channel through PayPal. My PayPal is at Official C. Watson, as you see on the screen. Any amount helps. Thank you so much, and stay pensive.